Monica Dennington, and I want to thank you for joining me today. Time for Truth is a show that is focused on God's message to his bride um, in these end times as we see in it in the holy written word of God, okay? No um, mystical, magical, um, spiritual uh, divinations here. We just go straight to the word of God to find out what Jesus Christ is saying to us in these last days. As the Bible says, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. And we find the testimony of Jesus Christ right here in his word. So we're going to go to his word and see what we need to find out as a church, what we need to be doing in these last times. I'm going to read to you in Revelation chapter 1. It says, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom and priest to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him and all the peoples of the earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. All right, church, it's time to get a reality check, okay? Jesus Christ is coming back. Okay, now please understand that he has given us many warnings that he wants us to be ready for his return and that if we are not ready for his return that um, we could end up damned to hell. Okay, bottom line. I mean, we'll, I'll show it to you in scripture, but I mean, that's the bottom line. And we've got to have a wake up call. The Bible tells us that in the end times that there will be a wake up call that will go out. It tells us that the whole church is going to fall asleep. Um, Jesus said um, in the parable of the 10 virgins that um, the, the 10 virgins are going to they'll, they'll They'll all fall asleep when they're waiting for the bridegroom. But there's going to be a call when they say, hey, the bridegroom's coming. And they're all going to wake up. Okay, there's going to be a wake-up call. And half of them are going to be found ready and half of them aren't. Okay? Now, we want to be in the group of people who are found ready so we can go out and meet our bridegroom. So we don't get left behind. Okay? We don't want that to happen to us. All right? So, we're going to go to the Word of God and find out what we need to know. In Revelation um, chapter 2 and chapter 3, where Jesus Christ himself comes and he has a message for the seven churches okay um, and in in each of those messages uh, many times he will commend a church for certain things that they're doing right and then he may have a correction um, and he says in in each one of these corrections he says if you don't repent of this I will remove your lampstand in other words I'm gonna uh, you know you're coming down you're not gonna be part of my church all right so these are very serious things when God um, offers his correction I know in this age of, um, you know, we, we've got a lot of people teaching um, a false grace, a grace that it, it gives us a license to sin, as it says in Jude, and that is a false grace. It is not the true grace of God. The true grace of God teaches us to live godly, holy lives, okay? And so it's important that we understand that. God is very serious about obedience. And if we don't repent of these things and um, wash our clothes, as he says, wash our clothes, um, then we're going to be found naked in his sight and we're going to be cast into hell. Let's not let that happen. Let's find out what he has to say. And today we're going to look at one of the things that he commended the church in Ephesus for, okay? He had a rebuke for them as well. But we're going to look at one of the things that he said that um, he commended them for. I'm going to read this to you. It says, to the angel of the church in Ephesus write, these are the words of him who hold the seven stars in his right hand hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked men, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardships from my name and have not grown weary. And then he does go on with a rebuke. But I want to um, focus on this. Jesus commended the church in Ephesus because they cannot tolerate wicked men. Okay? And that they have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them false. Listen, folks. Jesus warned us in Matthew chapter 24. He said, at that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many 
people. Okay. And it goes on to say that they'll even do a uh, miracles to deceive even the elect. If that were possible. Okay. We are living in a day and age where false apostles abound, false prophets abound. Okay. We are surrounded by them. So I want you to understand this. If Jesus word is true, if you read through Matthew 24, it clearly establishes the fact that we are in the last generation right now, according to the science that Jesus has given us. Okay. And in that last generation, it says that these false prophets, false apostles are going to abound. So I want you to ask yourself a question. I want you to look around in your church, okay, in your group of Christian friends, and in the televangelists and the teachers, the, all the Bible teachers that you listen to. And I want you to ask yourself a question. Who have I rejected? Because if you haven't rejected anybody, you are swallowing every wind of doctrine that comes your way. And statistically, according to the word of God, there are going to be more evil men out there than there are going to be true. There's going to be more false doctrine coming out than, than there are going to be people out there speaking the truth. Okay, the, These false apostles, these false prophets are going to abound. All right. And so if you have not rejected anyone, if you have not tested every doctrine that you hear, then you are swallowing lies right now. OK, if you think that just because somebody does a miracle, if you think that just because you get healed under somebody's, quote, anointing, that that means that they're from God, you need to read your Bible. OK, because the Bible says that these guys are going to come and they're going to be doing miracles and it's going to deceive even the elect. If that were possible, we need to be scared of that. You guys, we need to be really scared of that. And Jesus said, you need to be scared. You don't be scared of the person who can just hurt your body. Be scared of him who after your body's dead can throw your body and your soul into hell. Talking about his father. He said, yeah, be really scared of him. We need to have the holy fear of God in us right now in these end times so we can snap to attention, wake up, and do our father's will. Because if we don't have that holy fear, we're going to be lackadaisical, we're going to be lazy, we're going to be asleep, and we're going to be found without oil in our lamps when Jesus comes back and we're not going to be able to go meet him. OK, let's not let that happen to us. So we need to do what the Ephesians did right. We need to test everyone who comes along and claims to be an apostle. The second you hear somebody saying, I am an apostle, your first reaction must be that you are going to test that. OK, do not let your first reaction be based upon the fact that they can do miracles because Jesus said there will be false miracles. Do not let your assumption that they're apostles be based upon the fact that they're very likable and that they're good speakers. Okay? <laughs> Do not let the fact that they are telling you what you want to hear influence you either because the Bible says that there are going to be many teachers in the last days that will come um, to, to scratch the itching ears of the people, tell them what they want to hear. Okay? We need to hear what the Bible has to say, not what we want to hear, okay? So let's test every apostle that comes along. And, and this applies not just to people who want the title of apostle, okay? But this applies to any Christian leader, okay? It's very important that we understand that we are to follow only one person, and his name is Yeshua. Jesus Christ, he is the Holy Word of God. If you want to know what you're supposed to do, the secret is right here. The secret is not in any other man's doctrine. It's not in some special revelation that some certain sect of Christians have gotten and nobody else has gotten. It's all right here, folks. It's in black and white. It's very simple to understand. And let me tell you something. The revelation really comes when you obey Jesus words. Okay. But, but understand this. Paul said, don't be saying you follow Paul or you follow Apollos. Come on, you guys. And Paul was an apostle. OK, the true apostles do not point to themselves. OK, and this is why you want to know what the word apostle means. It means one who has been sent a messenger, an envoy. OK, or um, even um, somebody who is a representative or an ambassador uh, from the person that they've been sent. OK, that's what it means. A person who has been sent. OK, so the question you need to ask yourself, 
whether it's um, whether you're testing somebody who claims to be an apostle, whether you're testing um, the person who is leading the flock in your church. But if you're following that person, if you're listening to their teaching, you need to be testing them, okay? Because wherever they lead, you're going to go. You better make sure they're going where you want to go, okay? You better make sure that it's not the wide path that they're, that they're leading you down, but the narrow path that leads to life, okay? So the question we need to ask is not, does this person have the position of apostle, okay? Because it's really not about our position, and a true apostle will tell you that. It's not really important who I am. Uh, a true prophet is not going to be focused on that. John the Baptist, you know, they're like, okay, John, who are you? Are you Elijah? Are you the prophet? Who are you? Are you the Christ? He's like, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm a voice. I'm a voice and calling in the desert, okay? <laughs> and you know what the fact was? Jesus said, when, when people asked Jesus who he was, he said, yeah, he was Elijah. That's right. Spirit Elijah came to you. But John didn't take credit for the position that God had given him because he had the same attitude as Christ. Philippians chapter 2 tells us we are to arm ourselves with, with the attitude of Christ that though he was um, in the very nature of God, he did not consider Godhood as something to be grasped. But he lowered himself, he humbled himself, becoming a man, taking the form of a man, and even humbling himself to death. The point is, if God gives you a title, if God gives you a position, it's so that you can carry out your job, and it is not so you can be exalted. So... You know, if you see somebody exalting themselves and really wanting you to know about all of their authority and stuff like that, um, that's really not the attitude of Christ. And you better really be questioning the spirit of that person. That's clue number one. OK. And God said it like this. He said there are wolves in sheep's clothing and there are sheep. You're going to be able to tell the difference by what? The fruit of the spirit. Discernment 101. OK. He said you're going to be able to tell by their fruit. You find the fruit of the spirit in Galatians chapter five. Okay, you're also going to find the works of the flesh in there. So it's a real simple list. Works of the flesh, um, fruits of the spirit. Okay, two lists. You, that's how you can measure whether somebody is a, a true sheep or a wolf in sheep's clothing. Okay, that's discernment 101. All right, but what I want to show you is this. Jesus was called the apostle, an apostle. He was sent by God. Okay, we always want to follow Jesus' example. And um, I'm going to read to you what Jesus had to say. Um, about himself. He said, it says, when Jesus cried out, this is in John um, chapter 12, verse 44 um, through the end. It says, the Jesus, then Jesus cried out, when a man believes in me, he does not believe in me only, but in the one who sent me. When he looks at me, he sees the one who sent me. I have come into the world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. As for the person who hears my words but does not keep them, I do not judge him. For I did not come to judge the world but to save it. There is a judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my words. That very good word which I spoke will condemn him in the last day. For I did not speak according to my own uh, but I, for I did not speak of my own accord, pardon me, but the Father who sent me commanded me what to say and how to say it. I know that his command leads to eternal life, so whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. Did you catch that? Jesus didn't claim that his authority came from the fact that he was an apostle or that he was the Son of God. He didn't claim that anything rested, that any of that authority rested in who he was. What he pointed to was the fact that when you're looking at me, you're not looking at me. You're seeing the one who sent me because I speak the words of the one who sent me. Okay? So this is what you ask yourself when you're measuring somebody, when you're um, testing somebody, that is, to, to see whether or not they're really sent by God. Okay? You need to ask yourself, who has sent them? Who has sent them? Just because they say God has sent them doesn't mean that because the Bible says that false apostles, they come and they uh, masquerade um, as, as angels of light, as just like Satan does, okay? That, that they masquerade as ministers of God. So we don't go by what they say they are, but we go by whether or not the message coming out of their mouth 
is the written word of God. The Bible says that we are we, we don't have permission to go beyond what is written in the word of God. Okay, so any anybody that is sent to you by God will not be speaking his own words. They will not be expressing expressing spiritual truths and words of human wisdom, as it says in the scripture. But they will be expressing spiritual truths in spiritual words. They are only going to be coming to you with the words of God, which are right here written in the Bible. Anybody who comes to you with stuff outside of this, you, you have no way of knowing if that's God or not, and you need to throw it out the window, okay? You need to test it by the word of God. That's how Jesus said. You're, you're going to know that, you know, when you're looking at me, you're not looking at me. You know, if you reject me, you're not rejecting me because I'm not speaking my own words, my own opinions, anything. I'm speaking directly what I heard from my father, okay? So, I'm going to read to you um, out of Galatians. It says in Galatians 1, 6, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you by the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let him be eternally condemned. As we have already said, so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted let him be eternally condemned okay please understand and paul starts out this letter by saying paul an apostle sent not for men nor by man but by jesus christ and god the father okay he identifies who sent him that's how you know you know what that's really what an apostle is just somebody that's sent by god okay and he's saying listen i don't care he identifies himself as an apostle okay but he says you know what <laughs> Even if I come to you preaching a different gospel than what you got right here, let, even if it's me, let me be eternally condemned. Don't listen to me. Throw it out. Okay? That's how you can tell whether or not somebody is sent by God, whether or not they're speaking the true gospel of God. So you know how you're going to know that? You've got to read your Bible, okay? Or you've got to listen to it. There are so many great resources available online now, um, free resources where you can listen to the Bible, you know, if you, if you don't have the, um, the wherewithal to be able to read it like you would like to. You can listen to it. But the point is you've got to find out what the Bible has to say, okay? Not put in somebody else's brilliant words, You've got to take God's word for what it says and obey it no matter what anybody else says, okay? So we're going to test every word that comes out of somebody's mouth to find out whether or not they are really sent by God. Now, what are we to do when we find out that somebody is preaching to us a different gospel than what's in here? Listen, you guys. There are false gospels everywhere right now. The spirit of Antichrist is loose. We're in the end times. And, and you guys, back in the day, I mean, when they were writing the epistles, they said many Antichrists have already come out, you know, have already been released among you. I mean, they've already, they've already gone out. All right? The spirit of Antichrist is alive and well, and especially in these last days when evil is coming into full bloom right before the harvest. Yeah. Antichrist is here. If you don't see him, it's because you are not seeing clearly. It's not because it's not there. It's not because it's not there in your church. It's not because it's not there in the, in the Bible teachers you're lis listening to on television. It's not because it's not there. It's because you're blind, okay? Because the Bible tells you that it's going to be there. So we need to open up our eyes. And like Jesus said, we need to let his words be a light to us, okay? And what does it say that the Ephesians did right? Whenever they figured out that these men were evil, it says, I know that you cannot tolerate wicked men, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them false. Okay? What did they do? They didn't tolerate them. Okay? You don't make friends with darkness. When you identify that somebody is a wolf in sheep's clothing, you disassociate with them. Okay? You can pray for them, but you can't hang out with them because the Bible says that if there's a brother that is in sin, unrepentant sin, once he's been given, once he's been confronted with the Holy Word of God and he's refused to repent, you are not even to eat with that person. Do you understand? There is going to be a holy separation that happens. The Bible says there's going to be a great falling away in the end times, okay? That's because God's word is coming to judge and he's starting in his house, okay? You cannot be afraid to separate from your dear friends 
people that you've hung out with in church forever, ministers that, that you've always followed for years and years. You can't be afraid to separate from them because if you're going to follow Christ, you're going to be a lonely person sometimes, okay? That's your choice in this life. You can follow Christ or you can follow the world. So let us choose to follow Christ. Let us choose to read our Bibles and to test everything and hold on to the good. I'll see you again next time um, where we'll be talking a little bit more on this subject. And until then, be blessed. TV is funded by viewer donations. Thank you for your support of the ministry of Jesus Christ in these last days.